guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Arissa and this is Arissa Roo Art, filming from her bathroom. <laughs> I forgot to make my intro for the video I'm putting out, you know, after this. And so I wanted to make it, but I didn't want to go out of my bathroom again because I'm warm and I just, I'm just editing and doing my voiceover because it's a resin video. So I was using my respirator, of course. So I'm doing a voiceover for this one, but I wanted to say hi. And to tell you that tomorrow, November 22nd, is the beginning of our annual inventory sale at colorart.com, which means my code changes for your discount. Now, from 22nd of November to the 3rd of December, my code will be Arissa Rue 2125 in the description box below. I'll spell it out for you and it's sprinkled in this video too. But for those dates, 22nd of November to December 3rd, you get 25% off your entire purchase at colorout.com. Plus, should your total before discount hit $150, you get a free color art tote bag. They're super cool, really sturdy. I really like them. So that's $150 before you put your discount code in. So I think that's a pretty sweet deal. I wanted to say hi to you guys today. I haven't seen it said hi for a couple of videos now, but I hope you enjoyed my video. It's a voiceover. I know those aren't the best, but it's a resin piece and I think you're going to dig it and it's really cool. I'll see you guys in a moment. Bye. All right, let's get to making the piece. So this is the Pebeos Iridescent Violet Blue, just I'm using to underpaint. I'm gonna do three gaps here. I'm gonna try to not say um so much here because I say that a lot. And then I'm also gonna try to slow down my speaking because this video is really fast and I, I can't keep up. So you'll see I'm going to take a few different prism pour colors and just create depth. So this is the True Silver by Prism, Color Art Prism Pour. And then I have the Northern Sky, African Violet, and then the Mayan Gold. And then I'm gonna use, I believe, Golden Ir Interference Blue. And then on top of that, I use the Color Art Prism Pour Frostbite. And lastly, the Water Dragon to add some deep tones to it. And then I'm going to use the Artist Loft Soft Body Black just to paint the shore area because I'm going to use black sand on there. I like the high contrast. So let's get to the painting. This is a 16 inch canvas round. Um, I use Color Art Pro Art Resin on this. I said I'm um, just now, sorry, but I love it. And I'm only putting prism pores in my resin and they work so well. This is just me going over the colors I use to underpoat. So I was just gonna to talk to you about the prism pores. They work really well. They don't accelerate, um, they don't accelerate the hardening of the resins simply because I'm not adding a lot and I want them to be transparent, but you'll see, I get all my working time with this and I think that's phenomenal. And so I'm putting a little bit of a clear base on there, just you'll see later so I can have a slip grease kind of area for my pour later. And so this is going to be pretty petunia and you'll see how little I put in there. Not a lot at all. It gives you a really rich color, but it's still transparent. And then I have the Chambord I use, but I mixed it with the Vivid Enamel because Chambord is a primary element and you can't put that directly in resin. So I turned it into a paint with the Vivid Enamel and look how pretty, it works really well. And then I have the Pink Diamond by Color Art. Oh, I'm gonna keep on saying by Color Art, but they're all Color Art Prism Pores. That's the only pigments I'm using except for my white. So that one, I'm gonna put a little more in there. I want it a little darker. And then my next one is Royal Galaxy, another new one. Oh, it's so pretty. I think I put a little more on this one too after I mix it initially. It's so super pretty. And the sparkle is phenomenal. The le next one I have is Pink Lady. That one is a pink, but it's kind of a peachy pink because I wanted some variety in there. So it's you see it's a softer, more muted pink. 
And I, I think that looks really great in the end result. And then I have Violet Rose and psh, holy moly, this is soft and lovely, this color, you guys. Look at that. They behave so well in resin and you only need a tiny little drop and it's perfect. And then I'm gonna do the Frostbite. This is my only blue tone, but it's like a really light grayish, silvery, sorry, silvery blue and it's gorgeous. And the last one I have is the Frosted Berry, which is just my jam. Look how pretty that stuff is. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna use Ashland Black Sand. I got that at Michael's. You'll, so I'm gonna lay the sand first and you'll see, I'm just gonna spread it out and then I'm gonna spread it up into the water just so it looks like a real shore. It's hard to get it to stay on the sides completely and you'll see, I'm gonna try in just a second, but it does add, you know, it leaves a, little, a few pieces of sand, but obviously gravity doesn't want that heavy sand on the side. So it falls off sometimes, but in the end it looks really cool. And so I'm just adding, and then I'm gonna add some more sand to the top and spread it on into the water for you guys because shores don't have hard lines. The sand continues into the water. But if you can see, there's a silver line at that shore line um, by the pink. And so I'm kind of revealing that through the black a little bit because I want it to be seen and kind of sparkle through. So it looks like you're seeing into the water and into that shoreline because you know, why not? <laughs> it's, it's pretty. I want to see it. And then, you know, I'm going to count to five and torch, I think first. And then I'm going to realize I forgot to put my glitter in my sand. I want sparkle everywhere. So you'll see in a moment, I'm going to remedy that, but I'm going to keep on spreading, torch it. And then I'll grab my glitter and fix my mistake. There we go. So I'm just gonna put the glitter on top and then churn it a bit because the sand, the resin's very wet, so it's fresh and I can do that without messing anything up. But I am creating some divots and such in the piece. I'm trying to get it to the sides too so it looks cohesive too. And so with the divots and stuff, I'm gonna end up adding a few more dollops of sand to this. I put the glitter in the sand too so I don't cover up the glitter with non-glittered stuff. All right, so let's do that. Recreate those holes at the shoreline so I can see that silver going through. There we go. All right. I don't know if I torch again before I start pouring. Yeah, I do, of course I do. I like torching resin, it's amazing. So then I'm going to soften that a little bit with my heat gun because I keep my workspace a little bit cold so my resin has more work time. So that's part of the reason I have so much work time. So my first color is gonna be the Pretty Petunia. And you'll see, I don't keep it anymore where I put all the dark at the top, all the, you know, descending into light. I like them to be varied throughout the whole piece with the majority of the dark in the top. But I want it to look like there is depth to the water because with depth, you get darker colors when you're looking deeper into the ocean. So I don't wanna just put the darker at the top because there would be some depth in there, in my eye, I guess. And so let's pour this. This is the pink diamond. And I'm going just down the line. This is the Royal Galaxy. And so I used to use my heat gun to move this ocean. The, anytime I'm doing kind of ocean colors, I used to use my heat gun to blend it. But now I don't do that anymore. I use just a popsicle stick because I've noticed that if I'm doing my heat gun too much, then it, my colors merge and I have just one shade and I love seeing the variation. Look how beautiful that frostbite is. I mean, really, Leslie, it's it's pretty. It's so pretty. You make it so hard for me to have a favorite pigment. Ugh. Um, this little tiny, this is not even a tiny, this is a jumbo stick, but I'm gonna get rid of it and get a jumbo jumbo stick. This, there you go. And so you see, I don't spread it. I don't combine those colors so much. I want ver variety in there. I wanna see a little bit of striation. I wanna see um, the majority of the color, but I also don't have a lot of chambord. So I'm taking some of my lighter pinks and I'm pouring it into the cup where I had the primary elements mixed with a vivid enamel so I can make more chambord with a little bit of a different hue because I added two other pinks to it, but it I, it worked well to give me some dark. because so I do want some dark at the bottom, at the top of it because that is the deep ocean part. 
but I just don't want it to um, only be there. All right, so see how pretty that goes and you can still see through it. And so I'm just taking the pink diamond, or sorry, the frosted berry and adding it to the sand because I never actually went over the sand line. And I'm going to use my stick really gently to move that because I don't want to disrupt the sand itself. And I'm just going to add color here and there and then we'll get to the waves. I think I have to do the, yeah, I'm going to do the sides first though. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, it's so pretty. And I did under, I did paint the sides too. So the lines on the top, they fall over the edge. So it looks like it's continuous and I like that. All right, so there we go. I'm going to put a few more variations through there where there's just big clumps of one color just so that it looks, I don't know. I just like it. It look, kind of looks like a planet. It kind of looks like, I'm like, it's just pretty. I love it. I love it so much. So at the, um, what am I getting? Oh, I'm going to put shells in it now. Oh, right now I'm going to shore up the middle because it was sinking a little bit. I forgot to do that. And then I'm gonna put some shells in first. Will I? No, I'm gonna do my, my, <laughs> my gosh. This is mermaid trash, lace white. It is amazing at making waves. Sorry, I needed some water there. So I'm gonna add some clear at the sand meets water point first because I don't want that white to go into the pink because then I'll get pink waves and I want white waves. So I'm gonna torch it. I'm going to always remember, I always used to forget to maintain some clear so I can do this step. And now I don't, which is good. So that's just my clear. So my white will go in there. And so with these little Dixie cups, I always used to want to bend them to, so I can get a line like that. But I always noticed, I noticed that when you bend it like that, you like pinch the cup, it gives you a wiggly line and then your shoreline is wiggly. And I don't like that. So I just use the stick or I pour it without bending the cup now. And you'll see me do that in just a second after I start using my heat gun. I always, I determine that I want more white at that shore. So you'll see that in a moment. Cause it's just not moving enough or far enough in for me. So I'm not pinching that, that's what I mean. So that way it doesn't give you like a jagged line because it translates into the waves when you start blowing them. All right, so here we go. It's just so pretty. I love it so much. And I'm just going to um, fine tune these, add a little more white at the end or at the edges where I need to, and the other side too, just so it's richer there. And then I'll end up putting a strip of white at the shore too. Yeah, it was still sinking a bit. That tile is too long, so I take a canvas. There we go. It's just a mini canvas in it. Perfect. So that was, it's, it spread out there because it was trying to come into the middle. And you can tell that really easily when you start putting your waves on. So when you do these, after you blow your waves out, watch to see where they're going because that's where your canvas is sinking or, you know, it's tilted and it's not perfectly level. So those are important things to watch for after you're, you've done your waves or resins to see if you're shifting out of line because it will continue to do so. So I just blew that hard line on low for my heat gun because I wanted it to blend in, but I didn't want it to um, wave up. So I'm going to put some shells on now. I got these at the dollar store. They're absolutely so adorable. I'm gonna put whole shells on. I'm going to put some pieces of shells on and then some pieces of pink shell on just so I can bring it down and make it uh, feel more like a part of the ocean because the ocean's pink. So I bet it would throw off some pink shells. I just, or shells, I, I just imagine. So here we go. Let's put the pink shell on. I got this of Michael's. Both of these are the shell pieces have all come from Michael's. And so I'm going to throw a couple more shells on there. And then you'll see, after I do the shells, the resin sand was going to dry super, super shiny. And I don't want that because sand is only shiny. It's not for shiny, but it would be shiny if it was wet. And it's not going to be wet so far away from the water. So you'll see I'm going to take my dry sand 
and I'm going to add it like a glitter, like you would a glitter, just to sparkle it on top. And that way, some of it will sink in and you'll still get some wet, shiny, quote, wet, shiny spots coming through. But you'll get a lot right, of this I wanted to dry show spots you the and those shiny the spots that I layer. missed. And of course, this will probably get a, this will definitely get a second layer. But so look thanks for watching. I'm going to show you a close up here in, in just a moment. They are so I'll be back with absolutely you. spectacular. Bye. It's just it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And when you do a second layer, it just gets a little deeper. And so that's the glitter that I added to the beach. But do you see how adding that dry sand on top? gives it more interest rather than um, rather than having it just shiny but it gives it some depth and so that's what I mean by the sides it won't be obviously covered in sand because of gravity but you absolutely do have some sand on the edges and the sides are painted and the underpainting is continued down the side so that it's cohesive but I love 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 primary elements as a color for resin. This works so amazingly well. And I love that that sand is under the water like that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at all of this. It's so gorgeous. I love this. Thanks you guys for watching. It is so much fun. And remember 25% off your total purchase from tomorrow, the 22nd of November to December 3rd. Use my code Arissa Rue. 2125 for 25% off your total purchase. It's our annual inventory sale. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Talk to you guys later. Bye.